I built an Overland Bronco for Orlando Bloom, and it is way better than mine. This is Orlando Bloom's Bronco, which from my last video, we are going to call Overlando Bloom because of all the comments I got saying that. And when Orlando commissioned me to build his Bronco, I started with my Bronco, Major Tom, as a reference, but I made a few minor improvements that you should consider for your Overland Bronco. Meet Major Tom, my two-door Badland Sasquatch Bronco. This Bronco has been my Overlander and my daily driver for the last 14 months. And while the build is good, it isn't perfect. So I'm going to walk you through all of the things that I did to both of these builds and why the way I built Orlando's might be how you should start your Overland build. And then a few things that I'm even recommending Orlando do to make his even better. So let's start up front. Both builds feature Heretic Studio lighting. The fog lights on Major Tom are all amber. And then I have a 20 inch amber bar with Heretic Studios Bronco specific mount for that bar on the front bumper. Um, I'm the type that loves amber lights. And I can make a whole video about why amber versus clear lights, and I likely will in the future, but to keep it short for this video, amber increases the contrast in the trail conditions, and then the lack of blue light in the splashback has less strain on your eye, so you get less fatigue while driving with a lot of crap in the air. So on Orlando's, we split the fog lenses. And this is an excellent option if you don't plan to have a light bar up top uh, because you can split it. Uh, and this is originally how we had planned to do Orlando's build, but ultimately we decided he needed that 40 inch light bar up top since he will likely be going out in small groups and uh, will likely be the one with all of the light. So we added that. Um, Orlando has another variation from mine on the front. He opted to add the cosmetic upgrade with the RTR grill, and it's a pretty involved install for a grill, uh, mostly because it ties into the daytime running lights but I think it looks really good. We did find that it didn't really work with the bull bar on the front, so we removed that from his. Another addition that Orlando made that I suggest you make is upgrading the tie rods. There are enough broken Bronco tie rods out there. You don't need to add yours to the mix. Uh, we use the RPG off-road tie rods and haven't looked back. They're amazing, they're beefy, they're exactly what the Bronco should have come with. So you can find those in the description below. Um, under the engine bay, on Major Tom, I added an ARB twin compressor with the 4x4 LEDs compressor mount. And initially, we didn't add a compressor to Orlando's, but since he has had it back in LA, we put in an SDHQ mount, thanks to some help from Wired by Greg. Going along the sides, we've both added the Archetype Racing Magnum stirrups. These are billet aluminum, so they won't rust from Utah's road salt or living near the beaches of California. Uh, both he and I opted for these versus a traditional rock slider, purely for the convenience of a step to access the tent up on the roof rack. And then this brings us to the roof rack. The best roof rack for the Ford Bronco is the Trail Racks Modular Rack or the Tremor Rack. The Tremor Rack is an all aluminum design that fits the Bronco perfectly. It is non-drill and mounts to the Bronco's factory mounting points above the windshield and then in the back on the hard top. The roof rack allows for the pass-through of all the removable roof panels, so you still get that fun of, you know, driving with the roof panels out, but you have a roof rack. And it's strengthened with a 90 degree bend to prevent the rack from racking left to right under any kind of load. We both opted for the integrated 40 inch light bar in the wind deflector, and that's just wired to the Bronco's factory upfitter switches. The key feature of the Trail Rack's Tremor Rack that I have seen a lot of the other roof rack brands attempting to copy is the integrated pack racks. These side mount systems add external storage similar to a bed rack on a truck. The benefit to these over any of the other attempts to copy them is that the pack racks hard mount to the body of the Bronco under the hard top. The pack racks on the Bronco can easily carry fuel, water, and max tracks without overstressing and damaging the hard top or the glass behind the mounts because they bolt to the roof rack and the body of the Bronco. They're freaking sturdy. Uh, the Trail Rack's Tremor Rack is by and far the best roof rack for the Bronco, and like everything I go over in this video, it is linked in the description so you can pick one up for yourself. On both of our pack racks, we have the water port on the driver's side. I put the water port on the driver's side so that the spout points to the rear, where it's less likely to clog with dust and mud after a long day on the trails. And then we have our Crazy Beaver shovels and 28 inch splitting axes on the passenger side. Uh, I have these in the K9 shovel mount, but Trail Racks has just launched their shovel and axe mount, which might be worth checking out as well. On top of the Bronco, we both opted for the super light rooftop tent from Go Fast Campers. This tent for me is tough to talk about because I wish everyone could get one. Uh, this tent is amazing, 
Unfortunately, they have been discontinued with only rumors of a version two launching sometime before the end of the year, which likely means next year. Uh, GoFast Campers has been releasing their back stock of the V1 Superlight and Limited Runs, which is how we got one for Orlando, but those have been selling out in minutes on the day that they are launching and um, on the day that I'm actually filming this, they dropped their final release of Superlights. So I'm sorry that you missed one because you, you likely did. But if you got one, good for you. Uh, you have one of my favorite rooftop tents that I have ever, ever reviewed. The key benefit to the Superlight is that it is in fact, super light. Without a mattress or bedding, this tent weighs only 80 pounds. So toss an X-Pet up there and it is still under hundred pounds, which is a safe distance away from Ford's 110 pound limit on the Bronco hardtop. Moving to the rear exterior of these two Broncos is one essential addition that we did right on Orlando's and wrong on mine. We both have the American Adventure Labs spare tire platform with the Rome Adventure Co 95 liter box. And this combo is a match made in heaven. The trunk on the back gives a weather sealed truck bed type storage to store recovery gear and other camp essentials that would dirty up the inside of the Bronco. And then a cool side note is that the Rome box and spare tire platform with the rugged mounts, uh, they bolt right in without drilling. So these mounts keep the box sucked down tight to the platform without worrying about any sun-worn ratchet straps or anything like that. However, the problem with adding all of that weight to the back of the Bronco's tailgate itself is the tailgate itself. Uh, Ford designed the tailgate for 35 inch tires and 35 inch tires only. I attempted on Major Tom to offset that low weight capacity design with a rough country plate, but there is a much better way to do it. On Orlando's, we did it right. We added the RTR spare tire carrier. The RTR spare tire carrier is nothing short of amazing. The installation is pretty involved, but once it's on, you will have replaced the stock hinges with absolute monsters and reinforced the tailgate with a steel tube exoskeleton. If you plan to add any weight to the tailgate or spare tire, be it a 37 inch tire or the spare tire platform with Rome box and Max tracks like we did, you need, this is all capitals, you need to add the RTR spare tire carrier. Don't do the dinky plate reinforcements like the one from Rough Country. Avoid those at all costs. RTR, it's the only way to go. Moving even further back, Orlando and I have both opted for one-up bike racks. Orlando is a purist and went with all one-up components. He has their new reversible swing away, the rack attach, and a two inch heavy duty double rack. Uh, this combination works well for him, however, it's a tad heavier than I would like hanging off the back of my Broncos hitch. So in this instance, I would copy what I did rather than one what I did for Orlando. Um, so I also have the one up bike rack, but mine is a single with the option to add a second rack when I need it. For the swing away on mine, I have the Kuat Pivot V2. Uh, the Pivot V2 swings about 110 to 120 degrees. So it will pivot, Let's see what I did there, past the Broncos open tailgate if you opt to have it on the passenger side like I did. In this case, I prefer my setup. It allows me to cut weight, especially when just carrying one bike and works to swing the bikes away from the tailgate when needing access to the back of the Bronco at camp. Um, it, I think it works well and it's the way I would do it again. As for wheels, we both went with 1552s. I have the Turbo Mac Classics in bronze and Orlando went with the analogs in asphalt. All of that really isn't a lot for exterior mods, but there is one that we both need and don't have. As a Ford ambassador, I cannot alter the suspension on my Bronco. So I've just lived with the inevitable rear sag that comes with all of that added weight. On the other hand, Orlando can do whatever he wants and he will. Uh, we are currently shopping suspension systems for him. And uh, if you're building an Overland Bronco, I recommend that you do the same. The rear suspension on the Bronco is relatively soft. And as you begin to add stuff, anything, uh, you will notice that it will sag. I mean, as soon as you add an American Adventure Lab spare tire platform that we were just talking about and a bike rack, it will sag immediately. So I know TerraFlex just launched their Altera line for the Broncos. If I were starting over with my Bronco and I could do whatever I wanted, I would start there. I loved their setup on my Jeep and I cannot recommend TerraFlex enough. If you have uh, deeper pockets like my buddy Orlando, you could look into the RPG mid travel kit. It will add all kinds of whoop eating fun and it will also help support the added weight in the back that is just inevitable on an Overland Bronco. Now let's move inside. Again, starting up front on Major Tom, I added the ever necessary 67 Designs Bronco rail. 
I opted for the full width, which gives me more space to mount various arms for my phone, ham radio, cameras, and really whatever else fits my needs. On Orlando's, we didn't add any tracks like mine. He is happy to use the Ford provided quarter 20 threads in the dash and just attach a single ball and arm to hold his phone. Easy, even if he uses that at all. Uh, I think he, he just opts for a clean dash. So do what you want there. One of the more asked about features in both of these Broncos is the battery array in the rear cubby. We both have four Dakota Lithium 18 amp hour, 12 volt batteries. These are running in parallel to give us 72 amp hours or roughly 860 watt hours. The difference is that my setup is way overkill and is not how you should build your battery array for the Bronco at all. Uh, I have a full Red Arc Manager 30 and Red Vision system. Both components are mounted on either side of the Bronco with these interior Molly panels from American Adventure Labs. It is a very, very nice power management system, but way overkill for the simple task of powering a refrigerator. Because of that, I did a 30 amp Red Arc BC-DC charger for Orlando. The BC-DC is like a micro version of the Manager 30. It will charge at 30 amps off the alternator while the engine is running and keep the four batteries topped off. The best part is it doesn't come with all the added fuses, switches, tank readers, inverters, and so on that I have in mind. It is simple and keeps his auxiliary batteries topped off without any added stress. Orlando's is a simple dual battery solution compared to mine and serves precisely the same purpose at more than half the cost. There are times and places to use a full Red Arc build out, but for a Bronco, the Manager 30 and Red Vision, they're a no go for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them in a Bronco. Above the battery sits the American Adventure Lab mass cargo system. Uh, because I knew my Bronco was temporary, I went with bare aluminum. It just cut costs. It looks okay, but is a fingerprint magnet. On the other hand, Orlando went full blown color matched and it looks spectacular. I don't even think this is something that American Adventure Labs will offer to everybody uh, because this isn't powder coat on Orlando's drawers. It's automotive paint. It is 100% color matched to his cactus gray. I mean, you could reach out and ask him, but as far as I know, they're not, they're not gonna do that again. So he's, well, he's special. Uh, if I were in your position, I would do a lightly textured black powder coat. Uh, it would prove to be more rugged and just look good for longer in the long run. We both have the fridge slide on the left with two drawers on the right. This layout brings up another change I would make. Uh, Orlando has a Dometic 45 liter fridge and I have a Dometic 55 liter fridge. Both sit at least one drawer taller than the bank of the two drawers on the right. If you can, add a third drawer here. It will finish out the back and provide more function to the deep, dead space that it kind of provides uh, without that third drawer. Because Orlando has a four door, he can add the rear cargo shelf, a must have for this system. It makes adding all of his Step 22 bags an absolute breeze. And if you haven't peeked at Step 22's products yet, you need to. These are built for overlanding. I have a few videos on my gear review channel all about them, but in short, they are designed by one of the proudest OCD people I know. Each bag is function before form. Material selections are meant to last, I mean, forever with nearly indestructible qualities. And uh, all these bags, they just, they look good. So you should look at those. Um, one nuanced difference between Orlando's drawers and mine is the interior. I opted to use the Alubox Romix foam dividers. Uh, they're similar to Trek Pack from Pelican. Uh, and originally I was trying to save money, but uh, I think they cost more. But these help remove rattle from the cooking and camp gear stored in the drawers. It's not cheap, like I was saying, um, and it does require cutting. I think I, think I spent $400 to make these work in my two drawers. So. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an expensive risk, but it's one ultimately I was happy I did. It removed all of that rattle. And uh, I mean, they're aluminum drawers, so things are gonna make noise and this, this helped. But was it a $400, like was it worth $400 to remove that? I don't know. And one of the last, but certainly not least modifications that we made is the Outback Adventure Products Trail Gator Fold Down Table, which is a mouthful to say. Uh, this table is perfect for every Bronco owner. Both Orlando and I have the gray hammer tone color. This table is built like a tank. It gives a solid workspace for cooking and a slide out bamboo cutting table that you can remove, wash, and even reverse. Then one of my favorite features is the magnetic strip for utensil storage while in use. And uh, the best part, it won't rattle or make a peep when bouncing down corrugated trails. This is the only table you need to consider for your Bronco. 
Both of these Broncos are fully capable for overland travel and each has its benefits. I learned a lot of lessons building both of these and I hope to save you a little bit of heartache in your build with everything we just went over. Everything I used in both of these builds is listed in the description. So if you saw something you like, you can find it quickly along with links to my Patreon. Thank you to all of my Patreon patrons. And if you want to see Orlando's build in action, he and I had some time to kill in Moab and hit a few trails together in this video right over here. So I'll see you over there.